Hi, I'm Adam Fields. I'm a chiropractor. You know, your hips have been great to you. Let's be good back to them. Today, we have yin yoga expert, Casey Wickstrom, gonna open your hips up. Thanks so much. You bet. Let's get right into this comfortable seated position just as you are. Make sure that your spine is straight up through the shoulders. This is pretty much all we need to do for right now. Cross-legged, we're already getting into the hips. We can stay right here if you'd like. Make sure that the weight distribution is here. Step one. If you wanna go a little bit further, we come to half lotus pose. You bring your right foot on top of your left thigh. And from here, we wanna make sure that the knee is not too high up. If it is, you can always place a block underneath. Um, mine's okay right now. So keeping the spine nice and long, if you feel pain, ease up. If you feel strain, it's probably okay. If you wanna go even further, we can come to what's called full lotus pose. Left foot stays just as is, and the, uh, or the right foot stays just as is, and the left foot comes right on top. This is full lotus. My knee comes a little bit higher above the ground. I don't hold this for uh, you know, hours and hours at a time. But half lotus, we can stay in pretty comfortably. So decide on whichever uh, sequence or whatever um, expression you're gonna choose. And then we'll just be here for a few cycles of breath, letting our body, letting our body settle into stillness. So simple, yet so profound, this pose. Mm -hmm. The more we relax, the more still we are, the deeper we're able to go into the stretch and the opening. Mm. Hips can be really intimidating, especially for uh, a guy like me. My hips get really tight, and it can be difficult to know how to open them up. And I've found that the more passive and gentle we start, then the deeper we can go over time. And these poses, these stretches are going to intensify gradually. And when we get to the end, the stretches might not be for everyone, but uh, there's a little bit of something for everyone in all of these. So you can hold this for as long as you'd like, whether it's a comfortable seated position, um, more like Sukhasana, or a half or full lotus pose. And from here, we're gonna incorporate a side body stretch, hey Georgie, as well as, uh, a hip opener. So from here, I recommend taking a block if you have one, placing it on the lowest level. And then we bring our forearm down and we reach up and over with the left arm. So this is a side body stretch, but we want to keep both hips planted on the mat. And what's happening with the left hip here, Adam? I'm feeling like my gluteus minimus is just loving me right now. Mm -hmm. just opening up. <laughs> And keep in mind, if that hip comes up, we want to keep it planted so we can uh, come up higher on the block, perhaps. And as far as the side body stretch and opening that shoulder, we can set our gaze down. We can gaze forward or we can gaze up, which is going to open up more through that left shoulder. We're still focusing on the hips, but we can also be mindful of our upper body and the activation there as well. I recommend staying with the breath, maybe holding this for at least five cycles of breath. You can go by clock time as well, but when we keep the connection to the breath, we're staying mindful uh, of our body and we're keeping that connection, the mind-body connection through awareness of the breath. Stay for the inhale, deepest point for the exhale. Next breath in, return to center. And if for whatever reason the leg bind or your seat uh, has gotten too intense, you can always come back to that comfortable seated position uh, wherever that works for you. And from here, sometimes it helps to bring the arms up. And then we bring the left forearm down, reaching up and over, keeping both hips, both glutes planted on the mat. Setting your gaze down, forward, or maybe up to find a little more opening through that right shoulder. It 
feels like it's getting into the joint capsule, actually. Mm-hmm. Beyond the muscles. That side body stretch helps facilitate that too. Just the whole weight distribution in the body. It's getting into that. Keeping the hip planted is really what helps us. Yeah, people get adhesions in their joint capsules and then the joint ends up getting tense, getting lack of blood flow because scar tissue doesn't have a good supply of blood and then you get degeneration. But we're bringing regeneration in there. We're bringing fluid and uh, hopefully breaking up some adhesions if needed. That's exactly right. In yin yoga, we talk about uh, the philosophy is that our bodies are filled with streams of energy. Uh, the streams are called meridians. The energy is called chi. And over time, these channels get blocked by stress. And by doing these deep, passive, meditative stretches, the idea is that we open up these channels and allow the energy or the chi to flow more freely. Come back to center. Now, whether we approach it from the technical, more clinical aspect, like you were saying, or the more uh, yin-focused philosophies, we're talking about the same thing, which is opening up and allowing uh, a much more fluid and healthy um, expression of the body, experience in the body. So from here, uh, we can come to uh, Baddha Konasana, or uh, butterfly pose, which is simply bringing the feet together and bringing them closer in towards one another. We can keep the spine long or we can fold over. The closer you bring your feet in towards your hips, the more intense that's going to get. I think a modification would be sitting on the block. Raising the hips would make it a little bit easier. Oh, yeah. I'm the modification. Do Follow that. me. Let me know how that feels too when you're sitting on the block and getting in. Oh yeah, a little easier to get into it for me. Right, and the weight distribution changes too. When the hips are higher, you're able to come forward just a little bit more. And again, you can hold this for five cycles of breath, 10 cycles of breath. Hold it for as long as you'd like. All of these stretches and poses that we're doing help to open up the hips. You can do all of them, some of them, or just one of them, and you're going to open up the hips. This would be wonderfully paired with the trigger point for hips video. Doing the trigger points and then stretching them out. What a combination. Mm. And keep in mind, especially in something like this, we're not cranking on the pose. We're not trying to force anything. We're not going from zero to 10 as fast as we can. We're holding it mindfully and gradually letting our body deepen. We're following our body in the pose. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's happening. The more we relax, the deeper we're able to go. Casey feels good rounding his spine a little bit. I'm keeping just a little more of a neutral spine. That mm -hmm. just feels better to me. Yeah, I like rounding through the upper back, but you can still stay open. Some people really like a uh, more vertical spine even, and they're able to get a stretch like that. I'd like to hold this pose forever if I could. But there's so <laughs> many other, there's so many other hip openers, uh, and so many other ways to uh, open up the hips. Let's get into another one, one that I call Balasana, child's pose. Toes touch, knees come wide. Maybe the width of your mat if your hips are cool with that. Maybe not quite, depending. And then you walk your hands forward, 
resting your forehead and forearms on the mat, starting out in a very passive expression of child's pose, balasana. And there can be space between your hips and your heels. Over time, gravity is going to continue to pull your hips down closer to your heels. And again, very passive. Reconnecting with the breath. So you can actually uh, go with personal preference on that. I like to find uh, total passivity, so I'm relaxing my elbows and my forearms onto the mat. Something you can do is walk your fingers forward, coming onto your fingertips, that way the arms are active. And even if you wanted uh, to go a little bit further, we can keep that length and activation through the arms and walk your hands over to the upper right hand corner of the mat. And there's that side body stretch from your Left fingertips to your left shoulder, left shoulder all the way down to that left hip. And we're still letting our hips sink down towards our heels. So whether you're finding uh, total passivity in the pose or you're incorporating more active stretches and more active elements, uh, both are effective and anywhere in between. For those of us in the side body stretch, let's hold for a few breaths. And you're still belly breathing. You're not rib breathing right now. Right? Correct. Yeah, I'm breathing from my lower abdomen, about a centimeter below the belly button. Keeping that connection with the breath, walk your hands over to the other side, right hand, go on top of the left. And again, that right elbow can be off of the mat. That would be much more um, active. Or we can rest that arm down. We're still getting that side body stretch, as you'll feel, especially through the right side body. All the way down to that right hip, both hips sinking low towards the heels. The elbow is down, it's yin, the elbow up is yang. Correct. <laughs> yep. Stay for the inhale. Keep this point for the exhale. Hands come back to center. Push yourself up. Let's come to yogi squat. Which oh, is my favorite. much more intense, but I think we've earned it and we've worked up to it. So from yogi squat and keep a block nearby. A block can be your best friend. We're walking our feet away from one another, bringing our toes off of the mat, pointing away from one another. Hands come to heart center and the knees stay wide. A block can be your best friend here. We can rest the hips on the block. We're still opening up through the hips, even with the block. The block can be any level if you feel comfortable, just letting your hips sink down as is. And a few ways you can go about this. One, like Adam is, keeping the spine nice and long, hands to heart center. If this is too intense, you can lightly plant your hands in front of you, maybe your fingertips. This creates a rounding in the back and brings the weight slightly out of the heels closer to the ball mounds of the feet. One is not better than the other, they're just different expressions of the pose. So find what works for you. And when I teach a yin class, we'll hold this for one minute, as in 60 seconds. But we can do a little bit less here, just knowing that you at home can do it for as long as you like. 10 minutes even. Maybe, not me, maybe you. <laughs> Great for digestive motility. Mm -hmm. And noticing any resistance in the body at first, really staying present for the entire experience we have in the pose, because the first 15 to 30 seconds in a pose like this, gonna be a lot of resistance, a lot of tension, a lot of 
perhaps stress in your body. But as you stay in stillness and continue to breathe mindfully, the pose starts to translate into your body a little bit more. And when we find that stillness, your body gets the message, oh, we're going to be here for a while. I should relax. I should embrace this pose, this experience. Then you stop fighting it. Then you're able to go a little bit deeper. All of that's part of the process, the experience of every yoga pose. We don't want to forget that, especially in something like this, yogi squat. Let's take three more breaths. Staying for the inhale. Keep this point for the exhale. And gently release. If you'd like, you can come back to child's pose. That's a great way to neutralize the hips by keeping them open. It would just be coming back down. And maybe you find that your hips are able to go a little bit wider the second time around. Just a few cycles here, more of a reset, really. Staying for the inhale, deepest point for the exhale. And press yourself up, find tabletop, hands and knees. We're going to come into uh, one of my favorite hip opening sequences. This is a trio of hip openers. So if once in tabletop, your shoulders are stacked directly over your wrist, hips over your knees, we're keeping a neutral spine. Then bring your thumbs to touch in the center of the mat and lightly step your right foot to the outside of your right hand. Welcome to low lunge, we're here. Feel free to stay right here or you can start to walk your left knee back. That's going to stretch through the left hip crease or the hip flexor would be your inner hip crease. Both hands are on the inside of that right foot. Your torso is on the inside of that right thigh. You can stay right here, or maybe come down to your forearms. You can use the block as a pillow or a pillar, perhaps, to rest your forehead on, or maybe your forearms. I recommend holding this anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute. Otherwise, you might not give your body the opportunity to really relax and start to deepen in the pose. So if your back toes are untucked, or if your back toes are tucked, untuck them. We want to be on the uh, top of that foot, finding passivity, neutrality in that left leg to really open up through that left hip crease. If you want, you can feel free to stay right here. This is very much a pose. This is a lunge, runner's lunge, low lunge, what we call dragon in yin or baby dragon, depending on the studio. If you want to come further and take wing dragon and move to an eventual what we call galaxy pose, we bring the chest up, walking the right foot forward and to the right, press that knee out to the right. When we do that, we come onto the knife edge of the right foot. And from here, left hand stays planted. We can reach up with the right hand. That'll get us even more into that left hip. And if you want to go further, Bend in the back knee, go for the quad stretch. This is extra credit, the cherry on top. Don't feel like you have to do it. And if you wanna come even deeper, coming down onto that left forearm where Adam is, is perfect as well. Coming deeper only if you know your body and it feels okay. Strain is all right, pain is not. You're upping your GPA right now, your guru. Points average, maybe. <laughs> and if you're at home and you have the quad stretch and it feels good, know that this is not just a quad stretch. I recommend really leaning back into it and letting that open up through the right shoulder, maybe dropping your head back and all of a sudden it's a quad stretch, a shoulder opener, a heart opener. And when we relax the head and let it hang back, we're opening up through the throat chakra as well, relaxing the jaw. That looks too good, I'm gonna try it. Try it. Mm -hmm. Or maybe stay. 
that gets too intense, I recommend staying on the ham before you come down to the forearm. On this side, uh, I can be on my forearm pretty comfortably. The other side, not so much. We'll see how that goes. Take a deep inhale. And release the quad stretch if you have it. Hands come back to the mat. I said a trio of hip openers, but I'm gonna throw an extra one in here too. Uh, we'll make it a quad. Um, walk your right foot to center and then begin to floss in that leg. So we're straightening and bending that front leg and straightening and bending in the back leg alternately. And from here, make sure you have a block nearby. It's gonna be your best friend. On the next exhale, we straighten that leg and we come to half or full splits or half or full splits prep. So you can start with your spine nice and long, a block. You can place uh, one or both on either side. You can use it as a balance or you can place it underneath uh, a hip or a thigh, up to you. Spine can stay straight. You can also bring your hands to heart center and start to fold over that leg. You can use a block there as well, maybe to rest your forearms. This is one of the most intense poses, for my money at least, in the Yoga Sutra. And there's a paradox in yoga. The more intense and challenging a pose is, the more we tend to lose the breath, which is ironic. The more we need that mindful, deep breathing to calm our body down and keep ourselves safe. So if you lost your breath, just notice. And once you've noticed, you've found it again. Like there's just a little inoculation to stress there. Just a little, ooh, that's intense. And then your body has to reset and go, okay, breathe. Breathe through it. Let it go. It's the only way you're gonna get through it. <laughs> Stay for the inhale. Take this point for the exhale. Then if you're folded over, Bring yourself back up. We're bending in the front knee lightly, bending in the back knee as well. And if you'd like, you can gently straighten and bend that right knee. We call this a three-point tabletop. And from here, we come to the final uh, hip opener in this sequence, the fourth one. It's called half pigeon. And we swing that leg forward. That front shin is parallel with the top of the mat to your degree. So your right knee is behind your right wrist, your left knee, or your uh, left ankle, your right ankle is behind your left hand. Uh, check in with your back foot, make sure that it's in line with your hip. And you could stay up just like that. Notice if that right foot is closer to your hip crease, see if you can bring it forward. You may not be able to go as deep, but you'll definitely feel it more in your hip. We can stay here or come down to what we call sleeping pigeon. If your right hip or left hip it's so up off of the mat really high and it's bugging you. You can always place a block underneath, but know that having that hip high off the mat is not necessarily a bad thing. It is personal preference. You can feel free to stay right here, or I'm going to cue a really interesting bind that you don't have to take, but it is uh, one worth exploring, I think. The chest comes up, we thread the left arm underneath, coming onto the left shoulder. Right arm comes around and grabs the right foot. So your right arm comes around the back and that's reaching for your right foot. That's a foot that you have underneath you. This would be a bound sleeping pigeon, a very interesting pose. And Adam, stay where you are. I'm going to cue or um, demo a pose that is essentially the same, but less intense. So if half pigeon is just not doing it for you, there's a pose called figure four that we do on our back. So we come on our back and on this side, it would be the right ankle crossing over the left knee, hands thread to the back of your left thigh and we're pulling that uh, left leg in towards us and the right knee is pressing away. We can also grab that calf and some of us can extend that leg and grab the calf from there or maybe a strap as well. This is in essence, opening up the hip in very much the same way, just less intense. And so half pigeon is not for everyone. I would never say that it's for everyone, but uh, this is a great alternative pose for that. And that's a good incorporation, Adam. Actually, we don't need that half bind in the uh, down sleeping pigeons, simply bringing that shoulder 
Uh, the left shoulder now and then reaching up and over that right arm. That's great. Gluteus medius muscle is on fire right now. You feeling it? <laughs> <laughs> a lot going on in this pose, a lot going on in all of these poses. We want to make sure we're breathing. Staying for the inhale, deepest point for the exhale. Pressing yourself up and back, maybe three-point tabletop again, shaking out that leg. Turning back to tabletop, we'll get the other side. Thumbs touch in the center of the mat this time. The left foot steps to the outside of the left hand. We can walk that right knee back till we feel that stretch in the right hip crease. Both hands on the inside of that left foot. Your torso's on the inside of that left thigh. Staying up or coming down to your degree. And make sure that for this part of the sequence, the bottom of your right foot is planted uh, fully on the mat. In other words, we're not letting that hip or knee open up towards the side just yet. This can be with a block, pillow, pillar, forearms, up to you. You can also stay on your hands as well. Obviously, the further, uh, the closer to the ground that you come, the deeper the hip stretch will be. Yeah, your psoas muscle, your hip flexor, is also an external rotator. So if you if you actually take your foot and bring it to the right mm -hmm. and get a little internal rotation on your femur, you're gonna feel that hip flexor just a little more. Ooh, I love that. That's the beauty of this practice too, just the most subtle movement changes the experience of the pose. You know, mindful movement brings us deeper into the experience. Something as simple as moving your foot over a couple of inches. Gets us into the hip flexor even more effectively, yeah. And again, we can stay right here. This is very much a pose. We're getting a lot of work done. If you want to come to Wing Dragon or Galaxy, we walk that foot forward, pressing that knee out to the left. Now we're on the knife edge of that foot. Right hand plants, we can reach up with the left hand. We could take this for a bind if we wanted to, bringing it around the back or bending in the back leg, going for that quad stretch slash shoulder opener slash chest opener slash throat opener. The more we lean back into that quad stretch, the more goodness we get out of it. A few more cycles wherever you want. Where we walk through water and we turn back time. I became a resurrected. The inhale. Keep this point for the exhale at the bottom of that breath. Gently release the quad stretch if you have it. Hands come back to the mat. That left foot walks to center. Keep a block nearby, your best friend. Bending in the front knee and straightening that leg as we do the same to the back, flossing back and forth. And then when you're ready, straightening that leg, setting up for half or full splits. Half or full splits prep, perhaps. You can use a block for balance, you can use it for support. This side may be different, in fact, it probably is. Spine can stay long, or we can fold over that front leg using the block maybe as a prop to hold this up so we don't come down quite as deep. Again, make sure you're giving your body the breath that it really needs. If you like some of this reggae vibe, this is Casey's original music, a lot of it. Try it, enjoy.
I may notice shaking in some of these poses or some of these sides. I say embrace it. What are your thoughts? A little shaking. Yeah, I definitely had some shaking going on. Yep. I was wondering, oh, is that coming through on camera? <laughs> Maybe. We're doing something, that's for sure. Take a deep inhale. Stay for the exhale. Pressing ourselves up, bending in that leg. Bending in the back leg. And then shaking that leg out. From here we come to sleeping pigeon variation with or without that bind or shoulder opener. That front chin parallel, the top of the mat, left knee behind left wrist, left ankle behind right wrist. Checking in with your back foot, making sure it's in line with that hip. And then maybe coming down to your degree. This sequence is four poses of really intense hip openers. If for whatever reason you don't want to do the splits, three of these are fine too, you know? Or maybe you want to do the splits and just end there, half or full splits prep and not really play around with uh, Damn, sleeping that pigeon. That's good. totally fine too. Find what works with you and you can leave the rest behind. For that bind or arm variation, chest comes up, we thread the right arm underneath, we reach around with the left hand maybe for that left foot, or we could extend that arm, planting that hand right above us. Mind you, you can stay in this pose or any of these poses for as long as you like. Here we'll take about two more cycles of breath. When you're ready, press yourself up and back, three-legged tabletop. Sit that knee down. Nicely done. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Go ahead and take those hips. Go take them dancing. Take them on a hike. Go use those hips. Enjoy. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks. Here's to your hips.